Dr. Martha Garza, an obstetrician, gynecologist, and board-certified reproductive endocrinologist, discusses the importance of the simple system of the ovulation method and how it's important to her to help women in her medical practice. It's been one of the most wonderful tools that I have learned in medicine. Short of, uh, I'd like to think of how we learned to take a history and physical in medical school, I think it has been the most powerful tool I have learned in helping women uh, look at their gynecological health. Um, when a woman comes into me, into the office with a chart, I may see months or up to years of gynecological history there detailed for me and not have to rely on the woman's memory, uh, which, as can be expected, can uh, leave out some very important factors. And we can identify irregularities in cycles and help identify progesterone defects, uh, which can help identify and help prevent miscarriages. We can, of course, easily identify women who have very regular cycles and don't have periods for three to four months or even years and um, help those women understand how dangerous that is and that they are at higher risk for endometrial cancer. Um, on the infertility side of, uh, of the practice, it has helped my infertility practice tremendously. As a reproductive endocrinologist, a considerable amount of my practice is dedicated to infertility, and I think I have been much more successful in helping couples uh, try and conceive and, and achieve uh, a pregnancy um, with the majority of the decisions still in the hands of the couple uh, and not interfering uh, in the beauty of the marriage act and actually uh, at much less expense for the couple. Research has shown some women have a window of fertility that is fairly long, almost six days, while for some it can be as short as a few hours. What the ovulation method can do is accurately show a couple when their window of fertility is present. All this without complicated lab tests. Many couples considered infertile are just unaware of their window of fertility. A simple daily observation taken by the woman can lead a couple to know accurately when she is ovulating. The ovulation method also indicates her window of fertility, whether it is only a few hours or several days. What then is this observation? To begin with, there is an organ called the cervix that lies just between the vagina and the uterus. This cervix is best known as the site for pap smears. It serves a number of functions, but the most notable for us is that it secretes mucus. This mucus is designed to keep sperm alive and also provide a transporting system for the sperm to reach the egg in order to fertilize it. The basic logic behind the ovulation method is this. If there is no mucus, there is no fertility. In other words, if the sperm cannot live or swim, there is no chance of achieving pregnancy. Without cervical mucus, sperm can live only minutes, while with cervical mucus, sperm can live up to five days. This mucus can be seen and felt outside the body at the entrance to the vagina called the vulva. You may have already noticed this mucus and been concerned about what it was. Many women often think it is a bacterial or yeast infection. No one has ever told them that this was actually a healthy sign. The cervical mucus will often change in its slipperiness, stretchiness, and even color. These three changes are directly related to the changing fertility hormones in the bloodstream. If you can analyze the cervical mucus, then you can analyze what is happening hormonally and hence have at your disposal very important information concerning your fertility. Cervical mucus is absolutely essential in achieving pregnancy. If one considers that the mucus will help the sperm survive, um, the sperm need mucus and the sperm will be killed within minutes in a, the acidic environment of the vagina if the mucus is not present. So if you will, the, I like to explain to patients that cervical mucus is the, is the stream through which the sperm will swim up through the uterus and into the tube and meet the egg in the tube because conception does not take place in the cervix or in the uterus, but it takes place in the tube. So the sperm have quite a long distance to, to swim up before they reach the egg. So it's one of the factors that is absolutely essential.
The first and most basic way to understand the ovulation method is by simple observation of the fertility patterns of the woman's cycle. What most women have in their minds as the pattern of fertility is that they get their period for about three to seven days, then they wait for about 20 to 25 days and get it again, and this cycle repeats itself for some 30 to 40 years. However, with just a little bit closer observation, the fertility pattern is more exciting and revealing. Instead of just the bleeding of menstruation at the beginning of the cycle, one can find that later in the cycle, there is another discharge. This time it is not a bloody discharge, but a mucus discharge. Not only is there a mucus discharge, but very often it will change in color, stretchiness, and slipperiness as the cycle progresses. Recognizing and identifying this mucus discharge is the key to gaining great insight into one's fertility. When does this mucus discharge occur, and what does it tell us? To begin to answer this question, let's start again at the beginning of the cycle. A woman will generally menstruate, have her period, for anywhere from three to seven days. This is considered the first phase of the cycle. The uterus is clearing away the old nest, so to speak, and is about to prepare a new one for the possible baby in the upcoming cycle. After phase one, menstruation, there is phase two, in phase two, there is usually no discharge, giving the sensation of dryness at the vulva. Phase two can vary in length from cycle to cycle, or may not exist at all. Phase three of the fertility cycle is the phase when the woman will notice a mucus discharge at the opening of the vagina, known as the vulva. This phase can also vary in length. Often the mucus will start out being thick and sticky. As the days of this phase progress, the mucus will get more clear, stretchy, and slippery, and the woman will know she is approaching ovulation. This clear, stretchy, and slippery mucus is by far the most fertile mucus and the clearest sign that ovulation is about to occur. This pre-ovulatory mucus is called peak-type mucus. Any mucus which is either clear, stretchy, or slippery is also peak-type mucus. It is when the woman observes this peak-type mucus that the couple should have intercourse if they want to conceive a child. Even if ovulation is a few days away, the sperm can sometimes live up to five days in the mucus awaiting ovulation. This is why a woman with more days of cervical mucus has a larger window of fertility than a woman that has only a short period of observable mucus. The last day of this clear, stretchy, or slippery mucus is known as the peak day. The peak day is also the most likely day of ovulation. On the day after the peak day, there is a dramatic change. Mucus is often absent. If present, the mucus is neither clear, stretchy, nor slippery. Once this dramatic disappearance of the clear, stretchy, or slippery mucus occurs, the woman has entered phase four the final phase of the fertility cycle, the post-ovulatory phase. This phase is usually 10 to 16 days and is generally consistent from cycle to cycle in the same woman. Sometimes during this last phase, there are patches of mucus, but generally there is limited mucus discharge during this phase. The ovulation method is extremely effective in, in helping women to identify ovulation. If you, the research shows that ovulation will usually occur 24 hours within the peak day or the last day of fertile type mucus. Uh, so the women become expert at knowing when they ovulate. And it's also interesting in my patient population to know that the majority of women before they are introduced to the natural family pl planning methods have no idea when they ovulate. So the natural family planning methods are, educate women uh, tremendously, women and their husbands, as to the, the normal uh, gynecological function. Before when I was doing, when I was very deep into the reproductive technologies, I really never considered uh, the cervical mucus factor. And if there was any mucus problem at all, uh, I would simply bypass that and recommend inseminations and uh, not thinking at all of the immorality of that act uh, or the expense of the act. And uh, inseminations are extremely expensive, well up to two to three hundred dollars um, per insemination. Uh, and of course the moral issue is not to be ignored. And now with the, with the um, ovulation method, I have realized that if we are able to achieve adequate mucus, 
there's absolutely no reason to use insemination. There, it's not any more effective. Um, so I have encouraged patients to look at the mucus to help uh, increase the, the mucus or help um, increase the quality of the mucus and doing that with simple medications or vitamins that have no harm to the woman and no harm to the, to the child uh, and have been very successful at that. <music>